Most American shotgunners are at least somewhat aware of the chucker partridge which lives in the high and arid parts of our American West, whether they hunt them or not. Chuckers are natives of Eurasia, and the one we have in America actually originated in Nepal. However, we're not hunting chuckers today. Marty and I have traveled to Spain to shoot a close cousin of the chucker, the red leg partridge. The Red Lake's traditional territory covered the south and west of France, Spain, and northern Italy. Today, Red Legs range from northern France and Belgium, southward to the Pyrenees of Spain and Switzerland. It has also been successfully planted in numbers large enough to hunt in England, Scotland, and Wales. Red Legs are a very handsome bird. Like our chuckers, they measure in the 14-inch range, and as their name implies, they have a distinct reddish color to their legs. The tail is a roughest red color, and they have a black necklace that extends from eye to eye around a white throat. Marty and I have been told many stories about the high quality shooting of driven red leg partridge, but neither of us have ever shot a red leg. So we're very excited about being here in Spain to sample the shooting ourselves. Bruce and I have journeyed to Spain for a hunting experience that both of us have waited a lifetime for. And when you travel to hunt this far away from home, as we often do, it is critically important to choose the right domestic booking agent to arrange all of the details for your hunt. So we did that. We contacted our good friend Jerry Booth at the detail company in Houston to arrange our hunt. She then booked us with Spanish outfitter Santi Barro to hunt the fast-flying partridge on his 7,500 acre Finca La Malgosa farm, which is located in the northeastern part of Spain in the beautiful region of Caledonia. Well, this is what we came to Spain for. This is the first day of our driven red leg partridge shoot. We've been assigned our pegs and our loaders, Anna, and Marty's is down there, so we are ready for shooting. Well, Bruce, and it looks like the first drive is going to be interesting because as I look over here, to where the birds are going to be coming from. That's a pretty high hill. Tall hill. So I hope I've got enough choke in the gun. Well, I think I do. I'm shooting a 30 thousandths and a 35, which is light full and full. I'm shooting my Perigini and Vicini 12 gauge over and under. Now, Santi tells us that we'll be shooting an ounce and an eighth of number sevens at these partridge. Well, I'm ready to get started. Waited a lifetime for this, and yes. it's time to go. Go to your peg. I'll go over here with Anna and we're ready for birds. Good luck, my friend. Good luck to you. Well, Santi just fired two shots, which signals the beaters to start bringing the birds to us. So at any moment, we should start seeing some birds coming over this high ridge. Well, like Bruce says, the birds should be coming at any moment. There's a little bit of anticipation and apprehension on my part because I've never shot these types of birds before, neither Bruce nor I have. And we don't really know how high these birds are going to fly, nor do we know how fast they're going to fly. So it's a little bit of an unknown to start with, but I'm sure that once the action starts, we'll get the hang of it. And I'm really looking forward to firing my first shell in Spain. Ah. <laughs> A little bit faster than I thought, Bruce. Yes, I had to take mine going. Good shot. Thank you. This is fast and furious, I'll tell you that. As soon as my loader gets the shell in the gun, it's time to go again. Ah. Good 
shot. Pretty fast, Tom huh, Hardy. Boy, real fast. They're much faster than I expected. Yes, they are. I'm seeing quite a bit of lead. Try to take a bird. I can't keep it. But here out front. Oh, I gotta get the safety off. Of it. Wow. The key is to try to get a bird early so that you still got a shot up here. Sometimes that is not possible. These birds just get on you yeah. so quickly. That's it. That shot. And they take a good bit more lead than we thought. This is a true crossing shot, so there's gotta be some forward allowance. Nap. <laughs> well, now we'll have a small siesta, I guess you would call it, while the beaters come down and pick up all the birds around us. Then we'll get organized and move on to the next place to shoot. Well, the red-legged partridge truly is a handsome bird. As I told you earlier, he's a close cousin of our chucker, and you can see the resemblance in the head. Where it differs a little is this rufous red in the leg and lower part of the body. It's, it's a very rust color. Under the winglet, beautiful through here. Not a real heavy bird, and that's probably why he travels so fast. Well, we're going to our second drive now. We'd like to take a few moments and recap what we have learned on our first drive. Well, I learned a couple of things. One, red leg partridge are faster than I thought they were. Much faster. The speed um, fooled me at first, for sure. Right. Um, and the other thing I learned is I need to spend a little more time in the gym. I'll tell you, it was like doing reps. You know, the loader, up, loader, up, up. When I finished, my arms were like rubber. And speaking of loading, I'd like to step over here and show you the proper way to use a loader. As I told you earlier, this is my loader, Anna. Now, we are going to show you the proper way to work with a loader. The idea is to keep your eyes up there. Don't watch what your loader is doing. You have to trust them. When I shoot, number one, out of respect to them, don't eject the shells in their face. They're usually slightly behind me. I'll take a step right here. What I try to do is either eject the shells down and then the gun here. Now, when she loads the gun, you will see that she gives the gun a slight push with the shells in it. That way I know that the gun is loaded. Then to keep from getting her fingers and closing it right here, I will take the gun away and open and close it. So let's walk through that one. Bang, bang, down, load, and push, and up. See how well that works? Her little push that she gives me I know that the gun is loaded. Then I pull away from her to make sure that I don't get her fingers and I'm ready to shoot. Works quite well. By the look of this scene, these are going to be a little lower shots than we had. Now we've still got a large bluff up there, but it's probably 40, 45 yards away. It'll at least give us a little more time to get a visual lock on the bird and maybe get a better sight picture quicker than we did last time. Well done, Marty. The 
this is a little easier shooting here because you do have a chance to see the bird longer and you can calculate the distance and the speed and the angle a little quicker. That was mine, Marty. <laughs> Shoot Marty's birds down there. <laughs> ah! Missed the duck. Well, I'm actually able to shoot more quickly on these birds, so I've got longer to see them. But it's still fast and furious. And they're just exploding out of this cover. There's one. Ooh, bad shooting. Yeah. Took four to get that one, Marty. I shot at him twice, and you <laughs> shot at him twice. I got him going away. Yes. I think it's over. Bueno. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Ah, wow, now that is exciting. Again, we had a little more time here to see the birds, so the shots were just a little easier. I had this tall tree in front of me, so quite a few of them did not want to clear that. They went to the right. And wow, we had some good shooting. My gun got so hot that the uh, four-in latch I'm not surprised was hot know. down yeah. here. Was it really? Yes, the, <laughs> the four-in latch. Mine got very hot. I started to actually feel it up in here. There's yes. A, there's a reason for that. Yes, I shot a <laughs> lot. <laughs> a lot of bangs. <laughs> there's, a, there's a good reason for that. <laughs> there's no birds left. <laughs> oh, man. Well, lunch is awaiting us, and they tell us we need to get there quite quickly, or it will spoil. We don't well, want that. Well, you know, they have a great routine here. You sleep, you eat. You shoot, you shoot, you eat, you shoot, you shoot, you eat. Well, let's go join we'll them for lunch. And then we can shoot some more. Right. <laughs> well, Bruce is absolutely right. A typical hunting day includes just what we did this morning. We went to a small village, went to a little restaurant in that village, had a very traditional Spanish hunter's breakfast, which included eggs, bread, bacon, sausages, even wine, which we didn't partake of, but we did have some good coffee. And now, after a couple of drives, we're going to have lunch served at the base of a beautiful Spanish medieval castle. Not only my first time shooting red leg partridge, my first time eating paella. It's a mixture of rice, looks like clams, looks like there's some beef in there, maybe a little bit of pork, and of course, the very large prawn. Looks delicious. Well, after a fabulous lunch, and I mean fabulous, I'm absolutely full, we're back in the field for our third drive of the day. And one of the things that I found out about shooting these partridge, you can use just about any shooting style that you want to. Now my preferred style is what's called pull away. And that is when you actually move with the bird, insert the gun with the target, and actually see the lead picture open up. That's very effective when you've got time to actually see the target for a while. Now in a scenario like this, as I'm looking in front of me, I've got some pretty high tree cover right here. That means I'm probably not going to be able to use that particular style on targets that are coming straight in because they're going to appear too quickly. So I'm going to have to come in just under the bird and swing through it. Targets that may come this way where I've got more open sky, I can actually move with the bird, insert the gun, feel the lead, and take the shot. The good thing about shooting these types of targets is that you get to employ virtually every shooting style that's available out there. So no style is absolutely perfect. It's what's going to work best for you. So keep your gun moving and watch your bird fall and good things will happen. Let's see how it works on this drive. Well now this drive looks like it's going to be very, very fast. We've got a large bush in front of us. The birds are not 
even going to be visible until they're right over that bush. So almost everything will be overhead. Or here they allow you, it's safe behind us, there's no beaters behind us, so we can turn around and take a going bird also. So I believe that here we'll probably shoot quite a few going birds. Yes, he was. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Arriba. Hey. Nice. Shot, Bruce. I hear him. Ah. Oh, long one. Two people <laughs> shot that one. We doubled him. Very dead. Uh. <laughs> Is that the funky foot that party? That was. I got, I got one with the first shot and my foot <laughs> wouldn't move. I think it's over. Oh, now that was fun. This tree really made a difference because these birds just exploded out of that tree. And a lot of times I try to pick the birds up coming through the tree to anticipate the target. And they would just jump right out and it was really, really quick shooting. So I'm sure Bruce had a similar situation where he had to shoot a lot of birds going away from us. Well, what would happen is if you didn't see them soon enough, then you're spinning and they're going so fast that by the time you turn around and get a good lock on them, then they're 45 yards out yeah, there because yeah, uh, they're fast birds. Well, Bruce, you know this really is a lot of fun, but when you travel this far to hunt, there's really much more to the trip than the hunting. While in Spain, we stayed at the beautiful Can Bush Hotel, which is located high in the mountains of the Catalonia region between Barcelona and Andorra. Our accommodations simply couldn't have been better. Situated on lands belonging to the same family since 1763, the Can Bush Hotel is well known for its attention to every last detail. The hotel's beautifully appointed rooms included comfortable beds, spacious seating areas, and marble baths with jacuzzi tubs. The hotel features a tennis court, swimming pool, sauna, and suntan room, as well as an on-site wedding chapel. The award-winning restaurant at the Can Bush is well known for its splendid Catalan cuisine, which is prepared using products grown in the region. The various dishes are complemented by a wide selection of some 400 different wines. Well, unfortunately, we're going into the last drive of the day. You know, typically on a hunt like this, coming to Spain, you would have two days of driven. They also hunt them a little different. Yes, they do, Bruce. They actually, like we hunt chucker in the States, they actually do a walk-up hunt using pointing dogs or flushing dogs, and some of the hunters that are here are going to be doing that. And, you know, I hear that they save the best for last, and if it gets any better than it's been... I don't see how it can be any better. Well... <laughs> I'm ready to make this Beretta talk a few more times. Let's go see. All right. Trigger. 
Dang. You shot him before I ever saw him. <laughs> well, that's the end of our fourth drive and a perfect day of shooting red leg partridge. I found the birds to be a worthy and challenging game bird. And let me assure you, as they are picking up the birds here, that every bird that can be found will be picked up and used as a food source in this area. Ruth, it really was a great day. And I, he's right, what a challenging bird. I mean, lots of speed, just a fabulous, fabulous bird to shoot. And of course, we can't leave without thanking the people that made our trip possible here. Jerry Booth and the Detail Company in Houston, our booking agent, and our host here in Spain, Santi Barro, and his Finca La Malgosa Farm. What a great place to shoot birds. And we'd like to thank you for inviting us into your home. <laughs> Thank you.